Honestly, I was very skeptical of the 4090 when it was first announced, especially since Nvidia didn't really give us any concrete evidence of any generational leaps in raw rasterization performance. All we got from them was promoting DLSS 3.0 as the next best thing. Not to mention, in classic Nvidia fashion, it's not cheap. MSRP is $1,600, with some of the partner boards going for nearly $2,000. That's more than most people spend on their entire PC. However, even without DLSS 3.0, which by the way, basically feels like witchcraft somehow, more on that later in the video, it is a generational leap in raw performance and the power draw isn't anywhere near as bad as you might think either. This model in particular is the GameRock Midnight Kaleidoscope from Palette. Definitely one of the more blingier cards out there for sure. And shout out to Palette for sending it over to us so that we can review. With that being said, let's dive into some actual benchmarks. First off, you really should be using DDR5 RAM if you plan to get this GPU to get its full potential. I cannot stress this enough. If you keep up to date with this kind of stuff, you will know that the 30 series did not benefit much at all going from DDR4 to DDR5 memory, about 1 to 2% on average. The 4090, on the other hand, made significant FPS gains when switching over to DDR5. The system we are using for the benchmarks had the i9-12900K along with 32 gigabytes of 4800 MHz DDR5 memory. Now, for each game we tested, we used the ultra quality preset wherever available, and for the few that didn't, we just maxed out every single setting. As you can see, even without the magic of DLSS 3.0, these are still some pretty impressive numbers. At 1440p, we saw an average FPS increase of 41% from the 3090 Ti. So basically, you can max out even the most demanding of AAA titles and still easily hit 144 FPS with room to spare. Although, at this resolution, you will experience CPU bottlenecks. This is also the case when it comes to competitive FPS titles. We tried Warzone, Apex Legends, and Fortnite at 1440p to get an idea of what kind of performance you can expect here, and these are the results. At highest settings on Fortnite with DLSS set to quality, we averaged 207 FPS. In Apex Legends at its highest setting, 236 FPS, although there is no DLSS support here. And in Call of Duty Warzone, again, highest settings, but this time with DLSS set to quality, we manage an average of 176 FPS. So the takeaway here is if you plan to game at 1440p, it is simply not worth it. You need to be jumping up to 2K ultra wides or 4K monitors to really start taking advantage of the power that this GPU has to offer. It's kind of insane how basically overnight the RTX 4090 has rendered even the newest of CPUs at bottleneck at anything lower than 4K resolution. Speaking of 4K, at 4K you can expect to see average performance uplifts of about 60% versus the 3090 Ti. Now obviously this is dependent on the game. GTA 5 for example only sees a 13% performance uplift but Remember, it is nearly a decade old game, so the engine limitations are at play here. For those of you interested, here's how the RTX 4090 stacks up against four other GPUs from the 30 series. At 4K, it's 60% faster than the RTX 3090 Ti, 76% faster than the 3090, 81% faster than the 3080 Ti, and 93% faster on average than the RTX 3080. Now for you ultra wide gamers, you're going to be pleased to know that it is now possible possible to achieve an average of 140 FPS at 3440 by 1440p. So if you're one of those people that owns a 120 hertz ultra wide and you have been waiting for a GPU to finally allow you to max out these settings and hit your monitor's refresh rate cap, in basically any game, then this is the GPU for you. Josh and I mostly game at this resolution and it's been awesome to have buttery smooth 120 FPS gameplay and anything from Assassin's Creed Valhalla to Red Dead Redemption 2. And with the help of DLSS 3.0 Cyberpunk 27, it looks freaking amazing. Now, speaking of DLSS 3.0, let's take a closer look at that and see how it performs. The fairest way I could think of comparing it to is the performance of the 3090 Ti with DLSS 2.0 enabled. In Cyber Cyberpunk 2077 on the 3090 Ti with DLSS 2.0, we averaged 73 FPS in the built-in benchmarks. However, with DLSS 3.0 on the 4090, this increased to a staggering 201 FPS, which is an uplift of 175. This percentage boost increased even more at 3440 by 1440p, where you can expect to see average frame rates of 172 FPS, 180% higher versus the 3090 
DTI with DLSS 2.0. At 4K, NVIDIA recommends you switch over to DLSS performance, at which point we see a performance uplift of around 140%, giving us an average FPS of 143 versus 59 on the 3090 Ti. Now, 143 FPS at 4K with max settings, with ray tracing, is just unheard of in games like Cyberpunk. And it really goes to show the potential and how effective this technology can be when implemented into games like that. Moving on to F1 2022. Again, we're on ultra preset here with ray tracing enabled at 1440p with DLSS 3.0. You can expect average frame rates of 200 FPS. At 3440 by 1440p resolution, 160 FPS. And at 4K, 230 FPS. Now remember, 4K is where we switch over to DLSS performance mode. So you do get an additional boost here at the cost of reducing picture quality. And then Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Josh absolutely loves this game and he was blown away by the FPS boost here. At 1440p, we we're getting 144 FPS. At 3440 by 1440, 146 FPS. Again, I think there is some CPU bottleneck going on at these lower resolutions. At 4K with DLSS performance, we're getting 151 FPS on average. These these are just crazy numbers for games like Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is notorious for bringing even the most powerful systems to its knees. Now, I haven't personally noticed any artifacting as a result of turning on DLSS. I sat down and played at Cyberpunk with no DLSS, then I switched DLSS 3.0 on, and the only difference that I could tell is the fact that I just nearly tripled my FPS, and I'm not bad about it. So basically, the 4090 completely obliterates the 3090 Ti on all fronts. However, it's not quite as simple as that since we do have to take into consideration power draw and temps. Palette themselves recommend a minimum power supply of a thousand watts for this GPU. Although keeping it on a practical level, we tried playing Cyberpunk at max settings at 4K with NOAA DLSS to really stress the GPU. And power draw stayed under its 450 watt rating, usually however around 420 watts. What's quite nice here is if you enable DLSS 3.0, not only does it give you an insane frame rate boost, it also drops the power usage to around 350 watts. But putting DLSS aside for a moment, the good news is that the RTX 4090 is more power efficient than the 3090 Ti. With that said, it is still a very power hungry GPU, which is one of the main reasons it's so big because of course you need a way to cool it. We went over dimensions in our unboxing video last week, so feel free to check that out if you haven't already seen it. But when it comes to temperatures, the power Game Rock is a solid performer. While gaming, you can expect temperatures of around 65 degrees with hotspots of 75, but that does of course depend on the case that you are using and how efficient your airflow setup is. This can easily increase by 10 degrees or so if you're using a case that chokes off the GPU, for example. Now I haven't tested every other AIB, so I can't really comment on where it ranks in terms of temps at this current time, but I'm sure as more reviews come out, we'll be able to make some better comparisons on which is best and which performs better. But as often the case, aesthetics and brand preference do tend to play a large part in people's purchase decisions. I know the aesthetics on the Game Rock Edition is pretty polarizing as some people love it, like myself, and some people absolutely hate it, like my father. Although I will say I definitely prefer the new dark kaleidoscope colorway. It's a bit stealthier than the previous design if you can even use that word to describe this amount of bling on a card. Now there's one thing we haven't discussed yet and that is where does the RTX 4090 fit in terms of value for money. On the screen right here, we've put the RTX 4090 next to four other GPUs from the 30 series, along with current pricing to see a comparison of the cost of FPS per dollar. And do bear in mind, these are general estimates of prices based on what we've seen available at the time of making this video. But as you can see, the RTX 4090 is perhaps not as bad as you might think when it comes to value, at least not compared to the 3090 Ti. It's technically a better buy if you're planning on gaming at 4K since it's around 60% faster on average versus the 3090 Ti at only 45% additional cost. Now, of course, this is without factoring in the addition of DLSS 3.0, which offers a significant additional boost in FPS over the already impressive raw performance gains. Once you begin to do that, you start to see that the RTX 4090 is a pretty compelling option for those that want the best of the best. However, this all depends on whether the games you plan to play actually have DLSS support in the first place. Now, I think there are around
around 200 games that have DLSS 2.0 support currently, and 35 of those games have DLSS 3.0 support at launch. And you'd expect that to be brought to the rest of the current catalog over time, not to mention the new games that haven't even released yet. So I think the most important question in this whole video is should you buy the RTX 4090? I guess one thing to remember here is to not let anyone make you feel like you need to upgrade. There are elitists out there that will tell you that you need the newest and most expensive hardware to have fun. And hell, even Nvidia themselves try to make it look like you're missing out on a bunch of new features. But the reality is, that 30 series card that you just bought is not obsolete just because a shiny new one just came out. With that being said, if you are someone who is looking to game at higher resolutions, especially at 4K, and you feel like you just need that extra FPS boost to have the crispiest and most buttery smooth gameplay, then the RTX 4090 will not disappoint you and you will be very happy with it. Let us know what you guys think of the 40 series down in the comments below. We will also be doing another video later this week to take a closer look at this GPU and see how it performs in VR. We feel like this is an area that often gets overlooked. In fact, VR is probably one of the best ways to utilize all the power that the RTX 4090 has to offer. So subscribe if you haven't and you wanna see that video and make sure to come back for that. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. We'll make sure to link the RTX 4090 down in the description below if you wanna check it out for yourself. And with that being said, have a great weekend and we will catch you in the next one.